Jackson Star. Here we go. Here we go. We're going. We're, we're live. I bet we're live already. How are we live? <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Okay. Bam. Well, all right. Hey, everybody. Ginger Cook here. It's Acrylic Painting Monday. We're going to be doing an acrylic painting. Woohoo! Surprise, surprise. I knew you couldn't have guessed it, but that's what we're going to do. So what are we going to do? We're going to be painting some poppies by the ocean and it's based off of an old one of our old eg artists uh frederick um child hassam 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 yep. and uh he did his in watercolor and one of the things that acrylic artists can take you know if you see a watercolor and you want to turn it into an acrylic don't try to make it like the watercolor try to make it like an acrylic painting that's what we're going to do we're not going to show you the watercolor we've done it we've done one of his before We've done, actually, we have several of his paintings on our in our academy. There's, um, uh, this is probably probably a couple, that we've, maybe four that we've done in our art school. But today we're going to be doing on 8x10 canvas, we're going to be using a palette knife and a brush, and we're going to try to get some texture going in here. And I'm going to show, it's going to take some hair drying, so you've got to be patient with us, but this is the effect we want to get, all right? And so having said that, uh, we want to welcome our moderators to our show who uh, keep the live chat friendly and helpful. And uh, who's here tonight, John? I uh, see Mona is with us, Luann, Steffi, and Tech Lewis for sure. That's who I'm seeing right off the bat. Well, what good shout out from Mona. She's from Sweden and it's like two in the morning or something for her. So yay, Mona, for hanging in there with us. And, and uh, Steffi and uh, the rest of the gang, we thank you very much. For coming, uh, Lady Liz is off to off visiting her on a whirlwind two-week tour of all the family, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren this week. Always fun to do. That's always fun to do. Uh, Grandma's always fun. She shows up. So, uh, you know, we're going to just have fun tonight, and uh, we'll just get started. How's that? I dropped down. Look at that. All right. So we've got this 8x10 canvas, and we've painted that's been painted blue, just to like a phthalo blue. Um, it's they love an ultramarine. And uh, this line here is what's called the horizon line. That's where the sky meets the ocean, and it must be level. You must have a T-square. If you're not using them, buy when they're cheap. I think you can see one on, on our Amazon store where we, you know, Amazon sells these. It's like five bucks or something. So worth having. I have giant T-squares too, but even the small ones are nice. Now, so the first thing we're going to paint is the sky, then we're going to do the ocean. And then we're going to go ahead and do the background for these flowers in a palette knife pattern. I had drawn where the flowers are going to be, but that's not helpful to me because what I have to have is the background first. Give Otherwise, it's down. not going to have the effect I want because one thing is layered over another. It's like when people do the hand thing, right? So, all right. So the colors we've got, let me just bring this up. Uh, titanium white, uh, zinc white. Zinc white you cannot a mix. You have to own that. And uh, it keeps uh, phthalo green, phthalo blue. This is a, a sort of a, um, it's a violet color from uh, Colbein, but also there's dazzling purple. There's uh, ultramarine blue, cad red, yeah, red light, cad orange, cad yellow, yellow oxide, and we'll probably come back with a uh, some sort of a luminous rose or magenta pink, okay, when we do the flowers. But that's what we're going to start with now. Hey, we want to mention Luann. In, in, Luann is in the house as well. That was my bad for missing her. I was multitasking. And I didn't see her name as I... I'll say, hey, Luann. All right. So we were mentioning people. So. so we're using... Someone says... For a lot of years, we used the ruby satin silver brushes. And some people are very confused because they bought a lot of those. And what I found was that, um, like often things that are made overseas, that quality control isn't always up to snuff. And... So I kept getting different tensions in my brushes, you know. But then the same company makes these called Bristolon silver brushes. And we like I've been using these for years. I like them so much better. So uh, for those of you who are, have been with me forever and have not caught up to the fact that we've changed brushes like five years ago, um, hey, we changed brushes like five, six years ago. <laughs> Keep up. Yeah, we're, we're always the last to know. All right. So now the other thing I want to have is, let's see, where's that mixing uh plaque oh here you got I it i want uh like a, this is a wax sheet of paper 
Oh, I'll be able to wish. Paper, it's actual palette it's, it's paper. It's palette paper. It's wax palette paper. Sorry, it's, it's wax. So it's, it gets, I, you could probably use wax paper. I've never tried it. No, it would roll all over and be horrible. All right, so <laughs> it's going to be white. Going to start with a scoop of this white, like that, almost more all white, and then the tiniest bit, like one percent of phthalo green, and one percent of phthalo blue, like that. And that's enough on my brush to just do this. Mix those together, and I've got this sort of pale blue sky like that. See that? And I'm going to get a little tiny bit more thalo blue, like another little drop of that. Okay, just like this. All right, there's my sky. And I'm going to come up here like this and just go ahead and give this a coat on the sky. It's fairly thick. There's no water on the brush. I haven't thinned this down. Well, here's a question for you right off the bat. Uh -huh. What does Ginger think is the most fun flower to paint? Oh, I don't know. See? I don't, I don't have a, a fun, really, flowers. I have some that are less fun. How's that? Rather than talk about the fun ones, let's talk about the ones I don't really like painting. What, I really, what don't you like? I don't really like painting roses. Really? No, I really don't. Uh, they take a lot of time and they're fussy. I don't like fussy flowers. The ones that take a long time to paint. I'm uh, a snapdragon. I love snapdragons. Yeah, but, you know, I'm just saying. Sometimes I, there's certain flowers that are just, so you know, they're fussy. A rose but I'm going to go ahead and take a palette knife now and mound this paint up like this. You see that? I see that. I'm going to mound that up like that so it doesn't dry out on me. As quickly. And then um, we'll just take a paper towel and I want to get the paint brush wet, so I'm just going to wipe off the brush like this. Now, the next layer here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Up, up in the studio again, sneezing. Okay, so the next layer here is almost this color again. Now, I haven't done any clouds in the sky yet, all right? We've just covered this, and there has to be some clouds. So probably what we ought to do is do a little whirly things like this, just barely touch it like that so we... It's just not straight lines going back and forth. All right, now we're going to take the phthalo blue and um, add to that white, okay, that we just had, that lighter mixture, okay? And let's take a tiny bit of purple, like less than 1%. Like, there we go. All right, there we go. Just a tiny bit of that dosine purple. We're going to come in here, you see, slightly darker. And... We're going to go ahead and paint this in, and I'm doing it fairly thickly. And uh, rather than long, just keep the brush strokes level, but we're just, you can do little smart, maybe some little shorter ones like that. Okay, so they kind of overlap each other, come up like that. And now the neat thing, we're doing something new this um the last, last week we started it, and I had this idea that we, one of the things that's very nice when you're, when you're painting is to be able to have a couple of paintings of the same thing. And for instance, those of you who are going to your art shows and stuff, sometimes people would like a little grouping of something, like maybe like two of these that they could go together. So we have on our website, for our red and purple members only, we will have the companion um, not video, but we'll have the companion um, uh, reference, material. reference material. So that if you know, since I showed you how to do this one, you do the other one the same way, and then you'll have two paintings. And while I have done this eight by ten for the for the convenience of being able to draw to um, to to get, um, to get it done, I think these would be much prettier in sixteen by twenty. That's that would be your next size, size to do this. So you notice how I'm adding a little of the dark here to give it a little bit of texture in the waves. Do you see that? Not much, just a little bit with that, like this. Okay? So I haven't done much. Now, um, taking a little of that light color that I just had, I'm going to come up here like that, the sky color, right? And I'm just going to tap that on and wipe the brush off. Tap that and I just tap it like that in the front. Not white, it's sort of that off white, that sky blue color, right? We'll just tap in. Uh, just, you don't want to go back too far. You just want to say that something like that happened, okay? A little wave action. Just a little, just a little wave action. 
just really, just the farther it gets back, you don't want to talk about it. All right, now, I'm going to rinse the brush. And this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Um, I would like to dry the this now, take a moment and dry this, because Ooh. I want to do the... I want to do the clouds, and John, John and I want to thank those of you who have joined our free Facebook club, uh, Curly with Paint. You know, what, what is our club name, Ginger? <laughs> Ginger, what is it? Do we know what this is? No. We don't know. We don't no, remember I anymore. I have no clue. So, Painting with know. Ginger? Painting with Ginger. Like I don't well, know. the girls know. It's just, it's... <laughs> we have people to take care of this stuff. <laughs> They'll tell you. Look at the costume. Uh, what is it? Rita, what is it, John? We have so many different... Ginger... Cook, ginger Cook Painting Club? Ginger, ginger, ginger Cook, cook Acrylic, acrylic painting? painting Club. That's it. Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. You know? I'm sure the girls will straighten it out. Anyway, that's free. Those of you, we've had a whole bunch of new members join in the last month or so, and you're starting to show us your artwork. We appreciate and, that. And we appreciate you. that. We've got, we're going to do a show and tell tonight. Yeah, we are. And, and uh, so you might want to look and see if one of your paintings is featured. If it's not, we couldn't do everybody's, but uh, keep posting because you, you never know. You never know. know. Never know. I'm going to dry this now. Okay. Have fun drying. Okay. The first one here we've got, this is from Mike, Michael Pettis. He is doing a bunch of painting of gnomes every month. He does a new gnome, and this was his paint pack for today. you got to admit, that is a beauty if I've ever seen one. Whoopsie. Next up, we've got Megan Evans. This is one we did of a sailboat. It was a YouTube one a while back. Uh, a lot of people did this one. We really like how those have come out. And that's all I've got for right now. So you'll have to wait until next time, next dry, to see more. Oh, you showed some of these? I did. I showed Michael and uh, Megan's. Isn't it fun? Michael's doing a gnome a month now. He got so inspired by our little gnomes that he's doing a gnome a month. And I thought that was the funniest, cutest thing for St. Patrick's Day, you guys. He's in the Noma Monk Club. Doing a, and he's just doing this all on his own, and we love we love it. Um, so we, we're going to take some zinc white now, if this is dry. And what you do with zinc white is clean, dry brush, flatten it out on, the, on there like that. And we're going to start just making some swirls like this, kind of like the letter C, like that, just swirls. Start a little bit like that, and let's get a little bit more. Let's get some more of that. There you go. Now, zinc white is so, if you do it with titanium, it's too bright. You need the zinc. And one a little secret about oceans and stuff is that usually there's a little fog layer. They call it a marine layer, don't they? Is that what they call that, John? A little marine layer. Uh, uh, wow. Right? You're very nautical. I've never heard that term. Yeah, it's a marine layer of clouds, yeah. Well, someone else in the audience will know, too. I won't be the only one that knows this, uh -huh. surely. It sounds like the Google's going to be had in a second. <laughs> marine layer. Clouds. So you see, you've got it up there, and there it is. And it wasn't much. Now let me show you. If you go back and do a tiny bit of titanium, you would do it. Ooh, look at all that. That is not a titanium. That's not a tiny bit. No. So let's roll that off the brush and then kind of wipe some off. Do you see that? You do that. Wipe off your brush. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention. Now, just You're on the tip of your brush, that. here's some white. You just use the tip of it, maybe in a couple places. Just the highlights from the sun. Just a, it's a highlight on the sun got it, but it didn't get everybody, right? Don't get this too busy because the poppies are really busy. This is just there, okay? It's just filler. That was it. That was it. Aren't you impressed? And you call that the marine layer. That's the marine layer. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Google. Where is Google? What that is. That's what that is for sure. Just like there's always like a little dark line back here. Usually, it's just some little dark line at the you know, horizon. I like wow, that. Wow, you're right. So, all right. So now we get to do, this is the fun thing, we get to do the, um, the background. Now, ideally speaking, I would use a medium for this. If I was doing it in a 16 by 20, I'd be doing like a, a, a matte, extra heavy gel medium, and I would let all that dry. And then I'd come back with my flowers. But we don't have time for that, so you're just going to have to take my word. That would be a better way to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, we just don't. You know, we just, uh, you know, certain things you can do with a palette knife, certain things you can't, and that's one. Okay, so we've got, 
we're going to start with um, some, we want to mix some green. So we're going to start with some uh, yellow oxide and uh, some cad yellow medium and a little purple. Just to tone it down a bit. Now that made, made it sort of a, a, a kind of a baby poop brown color, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a little phthalo green, just a touch right. of that. Kids get thrown under the bus. And then we're going to add to that. And you see how we have this olive green? Great color. All right. Now, I'm not going to use any medium, but I'm scraping it up like this on my brush. And I'm going to come up here like this. And that would be just a palette knife. Using my palette knife, I'm going to come up like this and say, this is my, oh, ooh, i got to have this lighter. It's too dark. Add some more yellow to that. Just go right on top of that with some yellow. You can keep the palette knife is up and down strokes like this. All right, goes all the way out to the edge. And then the other place that color is, you always have to ask yourself, where else is that color? Okay. The other place that color is, is um, that's up there. And then I want to put some white with this. Okay. Get a little of that purple color. Okay. Ooh, let's do, here, let's just do a couple colors here. This little purple and that. There you go. So I've got that purple and the yellow oxide color. Okay. Mm, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let's try that. Okay, there. That's kind of got a dark green there, right? So I'm going to come along here on the ocean here like this. Here's my darker green right here. And then I'm going to take some white paint and add it to this yellow mixture and add some phthalo green. Somebody complained the other day they couldn't follow mixing the colors. You've got to know how to mix colors. We can't do beginner videos for you. We have so many beginner videos on showing you how to mix colors, but at some point you kind of have to learn them, right? Don't you think, John? Well, yeah, you got to. Yeah. At some point you've got to kind of learn to mix the colors. We suggest the color mixing videos so that, uh, that we have, those videos that show you how to do that. Now this is added white to all that, right? And I want to come in here like this. And I'm going to just, using the downward brush strokes like this, I'm going to say that there's my some green in here, down here in this corner. Okay. And it sounds, sounds that sounds pretty easy. And then maybe take, come up here a little bit and say here's some green. Up here a little darker. Okay. And, um, all right, so that's that's pretty self-explanatory, yes, yes. So when you're using a palette knife, what you want to do is wipe it off. Don't try, you know, use a paper towel, wipe it off. Now we want to get into some blues. So we're going to take some phthalo green and white. And a little tiny bit of phthalo blue. Okay. Okay, let's, let's actually put the white, let's just get this white up here on the palette where I can use it. Okay. All right, now, see this pretty blue-green here? Almost like a emerald green. I barely touch this, I'm going to come over this grass, and just like this, I'm going to add some of this blue-green color. I want some lighter colors with it. There you go. Now, when you're overlapping a color, then you have to stop, right? So if I've done this much, then you're going, well, what else? where else could I put it? Well, I could put it, I know that I want some darker blue and greens up in here. So what I'm going to do here, let's see, there's some red on that. Let's see, I, want, I know I want some darker colors. So because when you do darker, you can do lighter on top. So I'm going to come in here like this and just add these darker colors like that. That's that phthalo blue, uh, phthalo green combination. Okay. Okay. See that? And as I come over to the right, I'm going to get darker and I'm going to add some ultramarine blue. Okay. Over here in this corner, it's going to get a little darker on us. 
See what I'm doing? You lost a poppy. You know, yeah. Well, we, we had to paint those out. We'll have to put them back. And now we're going to go back into the phthalo green, phthalo blue combination with white. And here's this lighter blue. We're going to come up here like this. Barely touch it now. Just come up this way. That with me. We want to come all the way up here. Scrape it on the edge and then bring it down. Okay. Okay. Now let's take some yellow oxide in phthalo, in phthalo blue and make a darker green. Okay. Now let's come up into here like this and bring some green. And if you add more blue to that, it will be darker. So as we get into here, we're almost going to get some purple. We're almost going to do some purple in here. There's some real dark in this area. So purple and, and phthalo uh, blue. And something a little darker in there. Barely touch it. Okay. All right. Now... What we want to do is um, up in this area, we're going to go back to our, our lighter green color. So scrape some of that up. See how I can barely touch it and go over a few things? So far, so good, yeah? Amazing. So there's nothing hard about this. You just have to, it's all on the edges. It's all working the edges of the paint. If we put a medium in this, it would take a lot long, longer to dry, which is why we're not doing that. Now, what I'm going to do is dry this right here. Now, I'm going to dry all this. Because I'm going to start changing purples, and I don't want to muddy these colors. Okay? Yeah, you've got to seal them. Do you want to, before you do that, do you want to take a, a moment just to show what's coming up? We've had a couple of questions about, like, the typewriter and the bunnies. Yeah, and... you know, it, that typewriter was took John almost two days to edit, two full days. But this is for the Academy, both red and purple members. Um, we're we're kind of hitting nostalgia this year. And this uh, 12 by 16... Um, is that what this is? 12 yep. by 16. 12 by 16. Uh, 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 the typewriter in an office. It's an old office. Yep. And uh, we really think this is cool. I've never uh, painted a typewriter before. And it was a bit of a challenge getting the keys, right? Yeah, still keeping it, it impressionistic. Hour, I think it was a six-hour one. Yeah, this took me a while to do. Uh, but you sock folders will love it. <laughs> Just, you will. Yeah. That should be coming up next week, probably. Well, we've got the we've, we've got, got the, the we've got the bunnies coming up this week, which we don't have a picture of because John didn't grab them. That's oh, didn't grab them. That that's being released Monday, which How is can that it, be not there? Monday, Tuesday. That's tomorrow. The bunnies. We wanted to get those in time for the holidays, so um, Good Friday is a, a week from Friday. So we want to make sure you had the bunnies. And um, the way. So. Uh, anyway, this one we think is really neat. I love the glasses on here with the glare and the books and, and this old typewriter. Um, I remember when I graduated uh, from high school, my mom gave me a oh. typewriter. And I have memories of my mother just sitting at a typewriter doing the books. And, um, you know, that's what people did back in the old days, right? Okay. So there's that. And then the bunnies are, um, these are the ones that we're releasing in, for the tomorrow. red and purple members tomorrow. Tomorrow, this is really Wednesday. a two cookie lesson. This is really simple. We have to keep the basket even when everybody have a chance to paint it. We think it's really fun and sweet and kind of nice. And uh, um, so if you like bunnies, boy. Now, if you want to own this, if you just if you just want to own this as your uh, downloadable tutorial own forever, that will be available f uh, discounted for one week only um, starting tomorrow. For those of you who well, are not members it. of the Academy, are not red or purple members, would like to do it anyway, okay? When we release it. When we release it. We're, we're pretty sure tomorrow. we're shooting for tomorrow, okay? All right. So I'm going to dry this now. 
and we'll show you more stuff later. I'm looking to see, see how long the um, video was for the typewriter. It's got 14 episodes. It was done over three days. You got four. Looks like a, just just about six hours. Six hours on that one. That was a long one. Now, do we have any other questions in there that we were that I missed? There's going to be a little bit. Let's bring up. Um, I want to show you this. This one here, this is Terra's of the vase from last time, uh, last week's show. And then this is the companion piece that we have available that she did in the same style. So between those two, beautiful job. Ms. Who are we Tara? talking about? Paris and her companion piece. Uh, no, see, that's what we're talking about. That's the companion pieces we're now offering for our, uh, you know, for our red and purple members. When you do a YouTube tutorial in the future, if there's any way I can do a companion piece that you can then add to your picture, we will do it. That's just one of the per what privileges Wonderful. of membership, right? Perks of being a member, right? Yep. So our next uh, challenge is to, you know, put in the surf, and we need it the, everything to go this direction, okay? So, you know, which is easy, to, it's not hard to, hard to do. You want to make sure you've got a clean palette knife. And we'll take a little bit of this white color and add just the tiniest bit of color to it. Like, well, the color I really like for that, right, is called raw sienna. Because you can get a, a, a really nice off white using raw sienna. Assuming you can get anything out of the tube. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Finally, that stupid Matisse tubes. I'm still using it up. It's nothing. I'm not promoting. I'm just using up. Does it make sense? <laughs> yes. It All right. So mostly sense. it's white. Okay. But I'm going to just kind of scrape and mix this. So that's a little darker than I want. So let's get some more white and just put it over here. So there you go. So it's kind of an off white. Okay. All right. Kind of yeah. Above. What? Almost just above. Yeah, so just we're just going to come like this and sort of tap this on almost. You see, if I take the, keep it kind of flat on the knife like this and just put it down and tap it. You want to come right up. It gets a little, it's the widest down in here. It's a little narrower up here, but nonetheless, there it is. And kind of reshape your knife occasionally. Just get that off the top and keep it back on the bottom. And we're going to say over in this area. And you want to make sure you see some blue. Okay, and let's take a little bit of that phthalo blue here like that. A little bit of the white with it. Like down in here, it might be a little lighter blue. Like that, okay? Not much. But that color goes there. Then, wiping the knife. Um, we're going to take that same color, but we're going to add a little bit more of the raw sienna to it. Okay? So the same color, just a, just a higher percentage of the color. I want to come up here like this. Let's get a little bit more white to that. And say that this is using kind of a curving motion here, like that. I've got like a cliff, sand cliff. Comes here like this. There's our light rock. Okay. Bring some down into here. 
All right. So far, so good. Yeah, everybody's with me. Um, I'd like this to be lighter. Now, once you've done a palette knife, then you can take, say, a soft brush like a uh, ruby satin silver brush. You can take a soft one. And um, you can change the color. So I can take that green that we had and lighten it up with a little bit of yellow. Okay. And I can come back over the top of this and barely touch it. And I still have my texture underneath so that I can change this color very easily. And leave some of that dark underneath and it makes for nice contrast. See what I did? Just change that, and I might do some of this in here, too. Let's lighten this up, too. Again, just using your brush, just tap it in there. You can lighten something up that, that maybe you missed. So it's a, sort of a combination of that. Now, in this area in here, I want some white and jasmine purple. Okay. And I can use the brush for that if I put it on fairly thickly. Fairly thick. Thickly? Thick? Thickly, that's a great word. I'm going to tap it in here like this. Just tap the paint in. Scoop it up and tap it. And take my purple flowers. This is probably best done not on a stay wet palette, really, honestly. Well, now you're going to go for thick paint. If you want for thick paint, just a stay wet thick. Here's some of this purple color here like this. Okay, we're going to go fairly thick and just kind of plop it down, starting with the dark purple. You don't see me use a lot of dazzling purple because there's a glare to it sometimes, but in this case, we're going to use it. Come up here like this and see, this is where all the uh, purple went. We're just, again, going to tap that. Maybe over here we're going to say there's some of this purple in this area. This is where sometimes you want a little tiny one. Just, just use the corner of your brush like that. And a uh, little bit of white here. Whoops. Just something lighter. Okay. Now I'm going to put the magenta out because. Um, I wasn't going to use it until the last, but I really do need to see it. Because what I want is a little bit of this color. You do purple. If you add ultramarine blue and magenta, make a nice purple too. But if you take just pure magenta here, come over here like this with this one. I'm just going to tap this on right in here like that. Just barely see it. Tap in some of that magenta. Okay. All right. Now in this area... I want some really neat turquoisey blue color. So what did I do with the palette knife here? So we know we want white. Yeah. In phthalo green, it makes a really nice light blue. You wouldn't think so, but it really does. Phthalo green with the tiniest, it's just a tiniest bit of phthalo blue between the two of them make this beautiful color and the secret with palette knife mixing is don't mix the colors too much so you know you've got some paint here so i'm barely going to touch it i'm going to come in here like this and um, i want this light blue color in this area like that maybe a touch in here like this okay and then kind of scrape it off can you 
tap, can we tap a bit? Maybe like that. Okay. Now we can go darker than that. Now we can start playing with the blues. Take a little ultramarine blue, white, add to that same color. Okay. I don't, that, we think we got some red in that by mistake. Let's yeah, take, save it. what? Looks a little red. Got some red in there, so we'll start again. Here's some ultramarine blue and white. See, that's a really pretty color. Now, let's come back over here and add it to, layer it to this. Then let's add some phthalo blue to that. And add up in here like this. See what we're doing? Barely touching this. And then maybe some more white. I want something lighter down in this corner. A phthalo green. Let's move that. It does take a little bit of paint if you're going to do this right. This is where you really get the colors. And you've got to, you've got to dry a lot if you have to. Um, say a little green and white. Okay. There we go. Let's see. John, how would you varnish this? Very carefully. If you put the varnish on, you're going to make it sure flat. you don't get it. No pools are created. You soak up the pools. The little puddles that may be created. Yeah, no, no puddles. It's got to be puddle free. It's not hard to do. So a little phthalo green in here. So you see how we've got these dark colors and I want some dark blue up in here, maybe a little bit of purple. Something a little darker up in here. Falling lights and darks. Okay. Cool. So we've got this really pretty pattern. Yes and yes. I hate to cover it up with red flowers. Oh, no. <laughs> you, me too. You hate to color it up with red flowers, don't you? So um, now uh, what happens with something like this is it really does require drying. Because you've got all these colors and you want to be able to put flowers on top. And if you do not dry it correctly, you're going to just write me and say, well, I don't know what happened. I have this hot mess. And yeah, okay. Possibly you do. Okay. And that can happen because you didn't dry it. And um, so sometimes on these shows, I'm reluctant to show you how to paint like this because I feel like people won't pay attention. I'm going to put a little white right in here like that, but I can barely touch it. You see that? Because that's purple. If I break this up with a little white right in there, I had to be very careful doing that, baking that shape up. All right, so I'm going to dry this again. That's Yay. what we've been doing. This is a show of drying. This is a show of dry. So, well, you know, John, next week we'll do something else. But this is the week we're doing <laughs> oh, this. Oh, we're ask a question. Wait, I gotta, let me construct a questionnaire. Yeah, what's the question? Well, no, I'm not going to tell you. All right, I am going to make a, um, a poll. Because we want to know your opinion. It's going to be about the painting style we're doing now. Do you want to see? I was supposed to pass this up earlier, I forgot. All right. I've just started a poll. You got a choice of three answers. I'd love to have your feedback on that because we got to know what direction you folks want us to go in. So 
get out those little finger pointers and point away. Let's get some pull action going here. We do have a little bit more to share on the, I got two more, I think. But I think you're gonna be done in a second. We'll have more drying time. I do wanna give a shout out to a, um, Get that. Wait a second there, boss. I'm giving a shout out here. Yeah, do, yeah, do that. Uh, let's give a shout out to Miss Sher. Why, why are you not hitting return there, buddy? There you go. Oh, that, that's, that's no good. What Can happened? Can I remove that? I didn't put in all the details. Well, what, what's the picture? Maybe I can tell you. No, 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 I didn't do a picture. I grabbed the wrong thingy. Okay, well, you want to come back to me and then find it and come back? No, well, oh, wait, you need to do a, a chalkboard. I'm going to do a demo here. All right, you got the chalkboard. Okay. We're going to have a drawing lesson, people. All right, back to the chalkboard. All right, so when you're putting in flowers, I see so many of you do, do this. All your flowers are looking at us. Okay, no. All right, so if you've got a flower that's doing this and it's partially open, and then maybe the shape's like this and then down here in the corner is the spot. But maybe you've got one that's looking this direction, all right? So you're gonna see the outside curve like this, all right? You'll have some petals here, obviously. And then you'll have maybe some up this way. See, this flower is looking this direction. See what I mean? Oh, so you're saying flowers face different directions. Uh -huh. Except mm. for sunflowers, and they all go the same way. It's really annoying when you have them in your yard because if you want them looking at you and you plant them on the wrong side of the house, they're, they they're, they're facing the wall. You know, it's just not, they, not they what you want. They follow the sun. They follow the sun, those creepy flowers. Okay, so. <laughs> the um, nerve of them. So then maybe we have one like this. It's not a circle, but maybe it's more of this shape coming this way. Here's the center, and it's more of this shape. Now, particularly when we're doing, um, we're doing these flowers, that um, we're saying what they are by where we put the dot in the circle too, right? And and you vary the size. Like we might have a little orange one that's like this, and then uh, up at the up at the up at the ocean here where we have them coming out. We might have one just facing this way, and that's all you see, okay? So be aware of the, where your flowers face. Maybe you've got one on a stem that they're doing this, but they're all looking that way, okay? Or maybe you have one looking down. In this particular picture, we don't, but maybe you would have one. Maybe it's just kind of somebody stepped on the stem and it's looking down. I don't know. But think about that when we talk about flowers. Now, the other thing I want to show you while we're just taking a break here and letting that just kind of head up a little bit. Last week we did, if you'll recall, we did this uh, on YouTube, we did this really neat picture of the vase, this uh, Grecian vase, Egyptian vase. Yes, and we have the traceables available for orange members. Some of you thought you could just trace it, could freehand it in, and you certainly it can be free freehand in, but if you're going to freehand a vase in, let's freehand it in correctly, okay? And how is that? All right. Now, the companion piece for this, and we already showed you Terrace, right? Yes. We showed you the companion piece. for These are neat pieces. And then the other question before I show you how to draw the vase is, this is the tape that was used on this as a crepe tape. It's just not in, you know, it's called crepe tape, and it's a drafting tape, and it's available on some art stores. I couldn't tell you who has it at any given time. But um, again, I'll just uh, thought I had something I could get some art, artist tape, Ruben Des Art. Uh, it comes in different colors: red, black, right? Yeah. Art, art, art tape. Uh, his art, uh, red crepe tape. Okay. So that question came up. I wanted to answer it. So. If you're talking about a vase, let's just 
So say I want my vase to be this big, okay? All right. And I'm going to have the lip of it. Here's the center. So you find the center and you find the halfway point, okay? Okay. And I'm going to say that I want the lip to curve here. So the, whatever you do on this side, do it on this side, right? So I'm going to say I'm going to have the lip come down like this, right? Or maybe I'll come up higher. Maybe I'll say, here's my lip, and I'll have it curve like this. But whatever you do, do it on both sides, okay? Then here's the center. So if you're going to cut the corners off, do them in the same place, right? So there's you've got a vase. Now, it doesn't really matter what the shape is. You know, draw it out on a piece of paper, okay? This side here has to match. Let's see, make sure if you go straight down the middle, this side has to match this side, okay? So whatever happens over here happens over here. Does that make sense? That's so how you do it. Symmetrical. It just has to, you know, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a wine glass, you know what I mean? And it's a, it's a cup like this, the stem, okay? Same, same, right? Okay. So yes, ma'am. That's how you do it. Well, Are we I mean, it just, it's this? just, it's just, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you can, you can even just cut it in half and, you know, then turn it over and show the other side. A lot of different ways you can get that. All right, this is dry. And what is that glob down there at, the, at your left? Okay. Okay. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to take some white paint and a clean brush and white paint. And we're going to put in the flowers. All right. So um, I know that, for instance, um, here I've got, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a flower Remember right there, go. right there. And then I've got one kind of facing this way here. All right, let's give, a, let's go back to our thank yous. All right. Uh, a big shout out to Sharon for her donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you, Miss Sharon. Now, because these are red flowers, I kind of got I've got got a nice big one here. Okay. So I'm putting in the shapes like that. Make sure the paint's white. And I've got another one like this. You want to vary the size. Maybe suggest there's some smaller ones here. I've got a little orange one that's going to go right here. Um, three, here we go. One, one, two. Let's get my little paper towel so I can wipe off my brush. All right, so I'm saying that there's a little one here. There's one right here in the purple. There's another little yellow one right here in the purple. And there's one right up here on the edge. It's the purple. Keep looking over the edge. Yeah, and then there's up here on the corner, we've got one in the water part of here like that and then smaller one here and um, we've got like a half of one here okay got one up in the sky guess we could and we've got really a nice big half of one right here and then we got a big one right there and then we've got one in the surf that's partially in the surf. So it's going to be a little trickier to do because we've got all that bumpy stuff, but we'll see what we can do, right? And we should have thought that through. Well, we did, but, you know, just took a chance. All right, we've got one here. Got a lot of red dots on there. A lot of, a lot of... Um, Must be a poppy painting. It's just a, it's a poppy painting. A couple of them touch. Okay. 
Um, that's, that's pretty much it. That's what we got. Now, the you know, you red only paints nicely over white. You guys remember that, yeah? So this um, white has to be dried, but it's not real thick, so it should dry fairly quickly. Let's see, we, I know we want one up here on the edge of this here. We had, they had one right here. Oh my goodness, yes. And then one right here. Okay. So we've got a lot of flowers. That's why we didn't want to do, get too crazy with the rest of this, right? Because we have a lot of flowers, yes? And um, the trick is to do detail on a few of them, okay? Just have a couple with have, have a little bit more detail than others, all right? So, again, I'm going to take a minute and dry those, all right? Kind of Ooh. a boring show, but I don't know if John's got anything else. You got yeah, a commercial? Yeah, we still got a couple more of the people, so I'll okay. bring that up. So you go right ahead. All right. We've got, remember the person lipstick that we did? This is Claudia. I, can, I really like the way that one came out. That purse is really... Very impressionistic, nice brush strokes on it. I really like that one. That one came out beautiful. And we got one more to share with you. And this is Tani. She did the vase. And that's how her vase came out. A beautiful job. And I like the purples with that. Really nice on both of those. So thank you very much for sharing your artwork in the Ginger Cook Painting Club, whatever it happens to be called. We never know. We never remember these things. We have people to keep track of us. Let's see how the poll's doing. Well, everybody's going for paint anything. That's not being helpful. All right, so we have 37% like today's, 19% like last week, and 44% so far like anything you paint. Okay. Good to know. So last week wasn't overly whelming, but it wasn't underwhelming. All right, so I'm going to take a small brush. We'll start the little angle brush here. We'll start with the orange ones up here. So okay. we're going to start with, uh, I think we had Cad Yellow Light too. Didn't we have that? Yeah, Cad Yellow Light. All right, love that color. You can't really mix it. All right, so let's take a little bit of Cad Yellow Light. And uh, let's see, where's our paper, just kind of tap off the brush. We're going to say this one is going to be, we're going to say there's a little bit light. We're going to just do that little bit of yellow on that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of cadmium orange. Just touch that like this. And say I want this one to be that color. And let's see, get some yellow on this one. We're just going to dab a bit of yellow on top, see? The combination of these colors. So the paint's fairly thick, that's how we're doing this. This is another just kind of combination of yellow and orange, like this, and then we'll take a little bit of magenta and darken it here at the bottom. Okay. And then let's do this one, let's make pink. So let's take some magenta and white and just say this one's pink. Got some pretty colors in there. You know, and then wipe the brush off and go back and I'm gonna say this one is a nice bright orange. Hey, okay. see, moderator Lynn from our Quebec office is back among us. Oh, hi, Lynn. She nice was under to the get... weather for a bit. Glad to see that you're back with us. Oh, absolutely. So pleased to see you. Let's give you Debbie a shout out for the donation that came in through Venmo. So you got a ticket or two in the old fishbowl. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much. She's a we Venmo. still haven't told everybody what they're getting this time. We haven't done it. No, we'll, we haven't we'll get there. Out yet. We're, we'll still, we're still negotiating. 
We're still deciding what we're doing, but somebody it's going to be wonderful. Now, a little Wait, bit of cad yeah, red and fantastic. orange, right? Mix them together. And we're going to say the bottom part of this flower, this part, is, see, right on top. you got to start with the lighter yellow first, and then you can have a little bit of color in it if you're careful. Okay? So then as we come over here, we're going to just stick with magenta and cad red. And we're going to say that um, this flower right here, it's a little dark. Let's put a little white with that. A little bit of white with the cad red, too. Here we go. More of this color and with some light yellow in it. Ooh, it's nice just, touch. You've got to just kind of blend those colors in as you go. Well, don't blend too much. Give it yeah, up. that's nice, right? And then you do that, right? That's we'll beautiful. start with these yellow, and then we'll start with just some yellow and cad yellow. See what I did here like that, okay? And then I've got a flower going right here. And I'm just going to goop up some paint and make this fairly strong. Kind of hide your wave. Kind of hide the wave there <laughs> like that, right? Could do that. Absolutely. And just barely just drag on a little bit of color right on top of that and just wave that in, right? So far, so good. I know you thought it would take a lot longer to do this, but it's not too bad. And then once in a while, rinse your brush so you start with a clean one. I want, I'm going to put the, the luminous rose out. I knew it. Couldn't resist, could you? Not really. <laughs> not well, really. I want some luminous that. rose out because I want that pink. And you can't really get that pink any other way. Some luminous rose and white is just so much brighter than than that. Well, yeah, that's what it's there for. There you go. And then I can put a little cad red with that. This one. As Ginger Ginger finished all the paints for people who had renewed, we have three. But just we stop until we get people catching up. Why? Yeah, we're no people haven't been writing us, so I'm not doing any more till I hear back from people. We got to get caught up with the addresses. People haven't bothered to send us their addresses, so there nobody's getting anything. <laughs> I'm not so going to sit there. Holding pattern not going to see it. We're all at a holding pattern. It's very annoying for me. And so, all right. So I've got this picture right there, and then we're just going to come on, move on down. So if you did renew during November and December for a year, last year, 2023, make sure that we have your mailing address for a gifty. What are you doing up there? Now there's a, this flower right here is um, is a, like a peach color. It's a rose or magenta, white and yellow. Now, this, the secret to that is then you have to have um, then you have to scoop up some white paint on your brush like this, and while you're still in it, just barely touch it and do like something like that, and then stop. Give some variation. You give some variation, and then here's a. This one is going to be another little red flower right here. And then we'll get some variation with the pink on top. Need some more white in that. Put a little bit of Let's see, I really would like to get paint out of this tube. There you go. Wow. Didn't mean to do that, but it wasn't coming out. Maybe we could save that in something, John. That's too... Holy moly. I know. I couldn't get any paint out, and then it all squirted out. Um, there you go. See? Like that. And just kind of swirl that paint around. Then in this one, we've got some light yellow. Let's say there's a little bit of light yellow flower like, like this with some white. 
on part of it. And we've got some orange on this one. And you really do need that cadmium orange because um, you can't really get that bright color without it. Reds are primaries, and um, primary colors are very tricky to do otherwise. All right. So as we come through and we saw that um, this one is, uh, uh, here's a nice pink one right here. And I might take a little bit of the magenta and give it a little shadow color like that. And then some white. Just barely touch it like that so that your flowers have more than one color. They're beauteous. You know, so. Hey, let's thank Anna Maria for her donation that came in through PayPal. And she's got a ticket in a fishbowl now. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got another peach one coming here, and this one, like that. And then take the white, scoop up a little on the side of your brush, and just add a couple little strokes like that, see? Barely touch it. While it's still wet. It'll blend a little bit. Then you got a little bit of orange right here. Is that the luminous rose that you were using? Yeah, luminous rose. And luminous got an, rose from Holbein. You've got another. Um, got another orange. I didn't make the space for it, but I've got another orange one here. I'm just going to do it. Uh oh. It's not going to be as bright. Well, it'll be all right. They won't have to be as bright, John. Some because of them can be the like, shadows. That one could be less than that, right? And the same thing with one here like this. Let's get some marigold. There we go. See, and it varied the size of that. Sometimes you just need to be able to do that. Have something a little darker on the edge. Jules wants to know how much for this paint. It looks like it's looking like off the edge of my cliff. What what's, what she wants to know? How much it is because it's looking like a painting out of her backyard. Oh, does it really? <laughs> off the cliff. Oh well, I would really just hate you, Jules, if you have this as your backyard. <laughs> just <laughs> nah, just. You gotta do a sixteen by twenty of this one, Jules. Come on. <laughs> All right, now let's. I want to put some centers in here, and I can drop some purple. I can take some dodging purple if I'm very careful. I can just drop it here like that. See that? You gotta be careful not mix it. Otherwise, I'd tell you to drop it. No, you tell me to dry it. That's it. <laughs> I'd tell you to dry it. Well, I'd tell you to do something. <laughs> now, depending on where you put the dot, remember, That's depends where on what is. it is, right? So we're doing like these little purple dots. Barely touch that one. I have one here at the bottom like that. Up here, uh, there we go, like that. Okay. Neat, huh? They're all floating though. Well, we haven't given them any stems, but... Um, I thought we were doing something different, something weird. Something well, one thing like. you can do now, this is what's so far to fun, is that you can, for instance, we can come back with some of our... Um, I want to make sure that we save this paint. Uh, I'm going to take this... Put it in the Stay Wet palette. And put it in the Stay Wet palette, right, like that, right? That's a big old glob. Okay. Because that just bursts, that's just terrible. 
All right, let's just. All right, now what we want to do is remember, you can come back and you can shape a few flowers. Maybe you thought you had it right, but you didn't. So maybe I'll just drop some yellow like that on this one. Like that, see? And maybe I'll come in here like this and I will. Let's see, where's my little palette knife? Little palette knife, where'd you go, darling? I might What's take some darling? take some um, no, light orange like this, right? Let's see how it wants to. It's right in the way, as it were. It just it'll it will um catch a few things right so you've got you've got that and let's just take some yellow and phthalo blue right well so that's gone but let's see what we can do here so here's some pretty let's put a little orange with that green right so i want some green in here See what I just did? So you've got a little leeway. You can you can still layer. You don't want to lose all your stuff underneath. So that's what we've got. Um, that's what we've got so far. And then what happened? Was this supposed to be a flower, and we just didn't finish yeah. that one? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now ship. what I need to do on this one is um, we need to just dry everything. And then I'm going to put some stems on the flowers, okay? Sounds good to me. That's what our next step is, all right? So we're going to dry this. Okay, let's give a thank you out to Mr. Jewell who uses Zell to make her donation. She's got a ticket or two in the old fishbowl. Uh, do you know when the beach painting will be up? Let me check the old schedule. I happen to have it right here. So we're just discussing this over the weekend. Let's see, we've got the bunnies coming up first. We've got the bunnies, the typewriter, then the beach. Have you shown the beach yet, boss? I haven't shown the beach. Let me show you the beach. Show you the beach. People want to see the beach. The beach is gorgeous. No 16 by 20. That's a simple one. Yeah, this is like a two cookie lesson. This is really yeah. a good one. This is really good. That's coming up for our cat red, red and uh, purple and members blue, you know. Yeah. And then we've got this one I just finished. I don't know when it will be released. Which one's that Th one? This is Chief. Oh, yeah, no, we don't know. We don't have a date on that one. We don't have a date on Chief. But this is a this is a really cool um, painting lesson. This is how to use absorbent ground, and then um, for the horse, you you do something else so that the horse stands out. So it's like a three part process of painting. This is a terribly important video. Even if you don't paint horses, if you're any kind of animal painter, you should watch. Sure. You should watch me watch like dogs. If you're making a living doing dogs and stuff like that, painting dogs, you should see how we do this because it. What's going to make you stand out as a portrait artist of animals, okay, is the fact that you can actually be a little more artistic than just painting a photograph. Because at some point, anybody can paint a photograph, okay? And then we've got, I'm going to show you this one. This is really cool. It's John has to back out for this. I can do that now. The genesis of this, and we're going to put a little, make a little video about it. The genesis of this was someone was saying, what is it? What is? Why would I want to, you know, hire your services? To, no, wait. To, your services of what? Our services to create reference paintings for you, because let's just suppose that you have something in mind you want to paint, but there's no reference for it. And you've spent hours on the internet, and the best you can come up with is um, you decided you wanted a dog, maybe in a oh, say a dog in a um. 
fire hydrant. That's what you got. But you don't really have, you don't, but then it would be nice to put him in a background in a city and w what kind of city and why is the dog there? Then what if the, so what if you could, what if in your mind you could tell a story with your artwork by just starting to tell the story and changing the story? And then maybe it's at night and um, the dog is left alone at night and it's raining. And then, then maybe it's in New Orleans, maybe in the 20s. And then this is the final 20 by 20 painting from the genesis of all of that. And we'll show you how we got That's there. That's a midnight vigil. It's called Midnight Vigil. And again, it's uh, a different type of style of painting. The thing that I want to express to you is that one thing you learn from me is you, you know, if you p paint, if you learn to paint from Bob Ross, you can paint very well. You paint his style. Um, there's a lot of other YouTube artists, and you paint their style. We teach you to be artists. We don't c care so much about the style. It's a more about the feeling of the painting. You should be able to be, you should be able to switch gears and be able to paint something just because it feels right to you and it's the emotion you're expressing with your art and that's what we want to put into that. This is a 20 by 20. It will be a step-by-step -step tutorial for our red and purple members. Yes and yes. Midnight visual. Midnight okay? visual. Okay. All right. We don't have a release date on that one or a chief yet. No, that's just a far in advance, but it, you know, if I film something, um, you know, I try to do that. Now I'm going to take a, a little cup here, and now I'm going to get some um, some white acrylic paint. And um, it's um, and it's, a, it's a fluid paint by Golden. I'm going to shake it up. Should be a little ball. If on you cannot get thin stems for these, your painting will be ruined. If you do fat stems on there. It won't. It won't look good. It won't work. It won't work. It won't won't look right. Don't do it. So um, resist. Even if you do it 16 by 20, you're still going to have to have some thin, thin stems. So I'm going to pour some of this white color in there. Do you see that in this little cup? Yeah. And I want to tint this um, just gr a little bit green. So I want this sort of green color. If I got that, sort of a little bit yellow and and blue. That makes green. Makes green, yeah. Yellow and blue makes green, right? But I want it to be pretty light. So I'm going to say, there's my, I want to tint this. Let's see, I guess I'm going to have to put some more paint on. I hate to do that this late in the game, but I just. Just stay with palette. We'll paint tomorrow. Yeah, let's just put some light green out because it's, I don't have to put all the blues out now. But just yellow and blue would have made this green. Okay, so here's my. Kind of spring green, right? See that? There's still not enough paint in there. It's a little bit more yellow. All right, so that's the color I want, right? Like that, right? Good color. Test it on something. So this is light color. Now, what I need for this is a very, um, this, this kind of brush is called a, um, uh, these are like, um, this is too fat. Where's the other one? Where's the good ones? Brush. Let's try a, um, I think on this, I want to try a, um, um, one of these um, silver Bristolon pointed triangle. Okay, let's try that. Good choice. Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to rinse the, I'm going to wet the brush on this and then shape it. Okay. And then I'm going to go into this flowy paint. All right. We'll start up here like this. Barely touch it. I want some of this a little greener. All right. So now here, we're just going to barely touch it. Some of these stems can be curvy. Okay. 
just use the tip of the brush. If you're using a little liner brush, just use the tip. The stems can cross over. You can come up from the bottom. Just keep them thin. Nice look cool. Wiggle a few. And if you want to, you can put a few little pods. You can say that there's some do it in the light area where it shows. A dark area where the light will show. Get, don't overdo it, but you can have like a few little pods. Have some tr uh, grasses coming up from the bottom or some of these leaves. Okay. Very cool. I'm liking it. Thank you, John. And I think even Sally's liking it. Yeah, I think Sally so. Sally gave us a donation and she's now a star. And she's in the fishbowl. Thank you, Miss Sally. Thank you very much. Okay. So you see, you guys, that that's it's um, sometimes there's times that, you know, John will tell you that, you know, that I use that flow, 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 flow paint, what, hardly ever. Yeah, but when you need it, you need it. Well, yeah, you, you don't because you're a thick painter. You're an oil painter with acrylics. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, Jules. Sally's a starfish. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, Jules. All right, so... Now, the neat thing about this, okay, this picture, you know, to me, the neat thing about it is that um, uh, you can go back maybe, and um, for instance, red is one of those colors that if you gave it a second coat, it might be a little more vibrant, right? Second or third even. And then sometimes you can come into these centers with a dot of yellow like that. Just something like that to, you know, play with it a little bit. You could go back and do a little bit. But honestly, this is cool. I mean, we did this little, but I kept to tell you, I have to, I would think a... Um, you'd be tempted to do it big. You'd be tempted. To, I think it would be just magnificent, big, big, particularly if you could, you know, do it with texture and let all this dry. Now, I want to have a little bit more of this light color. Um here, I want this light to come out a little bit further, but that's all right, I could do that because, see how I wanted that a little bit lighter where my rock is, right? And I can do that, or if you have something that you wanted, um, you, you know, a little bit lighter somewhere else, you could do that, but you're okay. Like for instance, if you're saying that you wanted something a little bit brighter here, or maybe a brighter, brighter green, Let's um, somewhere you wanted that uh, just something brighter where it's, where something was showing. You can go back and you can add it, but honestly, you don't.
And if you're careful, you can use regular acrylic paint too. Here's some thin lines with the regular acrylic just to show you could be done. When you use the raw sienna, do you remember if you did that for the foam or the or the beach? I did it both. A little bit of 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 both. So do you have a little frame, John? Do I? Mm -hmm. Can you find us a little frame? Of course frame? I do. Don't be silly. Okay. I got a gorgeous green one or blue one. I'm thinking probably bluish green. You mean the show's over? Yeah, we we did it. You wow. wouldn't have thought you wouldn't have thought we could do it, would you? No, it feels like we just got here. Yeah, exactly so, huh? Well, how's the poll doing? Are you changing the attitudes of folks? Thirty-three percent like today's, twenty-one percent like last week's, and forty-six says anything you paint. One hundred and forty-one voters. All right. Well, so you know we appreciate you vote. guys. We appreciate your feedback, because otherwise, how would we know what, what to do, right? Absolutely. You know, we, we appreciate Tara, the feedback. The and again, you could... Tara with, apparently came in late, because we talked about the bunnies. The bunnies are going to be released, hopefully, tonight or tomorrow. Depends on how long dinner and everything else takes. Yeah. Let me see how the light... I'm thinking... Well, that's a tough one. I think either one would be good. So let's get them both up there. We have a little canvas, so these guys got to come out. All right, nice, fun, fun. Okay, so John's going to put this in a frame. I'm going to give it a fast, quick dry just to kind of seal it, right? Oh, good deal. No, I shouldn't do that? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Dry it. All right, as she's drying it, folks. Looks like we're winding up for the evening. Thank you for all that made donations this time around. We will get the uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the painting shown here shortly since we figure out what we're doing. The tar, the release of the bunnies, like I said, is coming out um, tomorrow or tonight, depending upon how the stuffy staff is working on them. Um, all right, are we ready, boss? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then I'll sign it when I get it in there. Because remember, when you frame something, you lose like a finger's width on the edge. Mm, tempting, Ooh, tempting, tempting. I think the blue, though. I'm thinking the blue. Well, I have blue. Yeah. I had to see the green, though. Yep, yeah, blue. Wow. How, these are these little frames that we get from Jerry's. They don't come in all sizes, which is unfortunate because no. I like them a lot. But uh, you can get them in 8 by 10 and um, 16 by 20, I guess. I think. Well, I know 8 by 10. I don't know how big they go. And Jules, we thank you very much for the interest in this painting. And John will, you know, write you if you're serious about it. We'll write you and give, you know, give you a quote if you want it. Uh, if it really does look like your backyard, I'm very jealous. I just can't know, right? Really? Backyard, it huh? It look like our backyard. No, but it was so funny. And I got to share this today because it was sort of funny. I was just watching TV and there was a, they were advertising backyard pools and they, they, they were obviously trying to convince people to put in a pool. We have, I have had my pool for the last 20 years. 20 some years, yeah. But we redid it during COVID. We re, totally redid the whole thing. But the guy was saying that, you know, you don't need a, if you had a pool, you wouldn't go on vacation. This would be your own little paradise. And, and, and I mean, what he was implying that you would get if you had a pool was just hysterical, right? Because what you have is a pool service when you have a pool. <laughs> that's, that's what you've got. <laughs> And you hope you have a reliable pool service, yes and yes? Now, you could use, if you had to, you could use a Posca pen. Oh, that'd be so risky though. Well, you could, if you, you know what I mean, for those of you who didn't have any of that other stuff, right? And use a Posca pen. But I think that all in all, this is fun, isn't it? I think anybody can do this. And then you, if you'll do the companion piece, it's on the, it will be on the website with, um, uh, with, the, with, the, with this. With and the if you're a red or purple member, you'll have access to it. So you could do, you could, and I would suggest, and here's how you're going to do it. If you're going to do them both, 
line them up side by side and make sure the oceans match. Just kind of tape the back of the canvas, tape the canvases together and paint them as one painting. Okay? And if you do it that way, then they will absolutely, all the colors will go, everything will go, and you'll really, that's one of the secrets of doing pairs, is to do it both at the, oh, I got some paint here. Uh -huh. uh, do it both at the same time, okay? And, and you'll, you'll really have something. And I didn't put any birds in, and I want you to know, great restraint, there are no birds. But and I'm, there is no tractor, so it's fair. So again, this was inspired by uh, Frederick, uh, uh, Child Sassam, an old EG, and um, normally he did watercolor. We're showing you how to take a watercolor and uh, by using a palette knife, create your own unique um, version of the painting, okay? And uh, that's really cool too, don't you think? I think it's marvelous. I think once again, you've outdone yourself. So thanks you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Um, your comments decide what we're gonna paint next. Uh, if you want, uh, you can leave me in the comment comments if you guys would be so kind enough comments, to do that not, too. Not the live chat comments. Yeah, the real, the real comments afterwards. If you like the, you know, so many people did our purses. I've got a really cool nail polish painting I could do that could go with that that I might possibly share with you guys. And I've got an Odon, Odeon um, uh, uh, abstract vase coming up. Um, got some different things, so. Your input's always valuable. I want to take a minute to shout out to my friend Andrew in Haiti. Mm. He's uh, lived there for 40 years. He's an American. He has, uh, has a business there. His business hires over 4,000 Haitians. Uh, and his factory had to close because of the violence. He and his wife and his family are huddled up and barricaded in a house up on a hill. And we wish them see. He still has internet. So this is everybody shout out to Andrew. There were... We're thinking good prayers for you, darling, and we hope everything gets settled back to normal and things can, you can have a peaceful country again. And get back um, to painting. And get back to painting because um, just like when Yoshi's living in her bomb shelter, she is not really inspired painting. And gosh, she lives in Israel, and when she has to ha hide in the bomb shelter to paint, her paintings kind of take a turn for the dramatic, as you can imagine. And... Um, but on the other hand, Andrew, it might just be a release. I know you don't feel like it, but maybe 30 minutes a day. Just why don't you paint your anger, your yeah. frustration, and your mood. Let it out. So we love you, darling, and thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Yes and yes. Bye, everyone. Bye.